In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a faucet or a, an approach for modeling a faucet like uh, what you see started right here. Uh, my reference is this image, which you can see in my picture viewer over here. And I'm creating this section right there. I've chosen to use hypernerbs and polygons here as opposed to a lathe nerves because I want a seamless join right here at the border. And while I could accomplish this with lathe nerves and uh, converting it to polygons, this I feel is the easier route. So to begin, I'm going to create a new scene in Cinema 4D. And because my object is round, I'm going to start with a round object, like a cylinder. So I start by adding a cylinder to my scene. Now because I plan on working with this, as a polygon object, I want to simplify the number of polygons I have to work with. So I'm going to reduce the rotation segments from 36 to 8. And I'm going to lower the height from 200 here to, uh, let's say, 50, or even 25. And I'm basically trying to create this portion right here, this smaller portion of my image. If I make my cylinder editable right now, I get a polygon object. If I go into polygon mode and click on one of these polygons on the top and try and move it, what we'll notice is that there's actually a hole in our cylinder. So we need to close that up. So I'm going to hit undo, hit undo again until I have nothing selected. And I'm going to use something called the optimize command. And to get that, I right click and I choose Optimize. I'm going to uh, just leave it at the default settings and I get something like this. Are you recording? Yeah. Uh, my polygon here on the top is now connected. I also have a bunch of edges on the top, and I want to eliminate some of these extra edges. Hypernerbs objects work best with quads or four-sided polygons. So I'm going to select my edge tool, my selection tool, and I'm going to select the edges that do not line up with my axes, so the ones at 45 degree angles to my axes. I'm going to do that for the top, and I'm going to do that for the bottom as well. So again, I'm holding down Shift, and I'm clicking on all of these edges. And I'm doing this because I want to get rid of them. I want these to be four-sided polygons, not a bunch of triangles. So once I've got those selected, I can right-click and choose Melt. And what that does is it gets rid of those extra polygons. I now have a good starting point for my faucet here. I'm just going to start from the bottom and work my way up. So I'm going to go into polygon mode now, take my selection tool, and select these polygons along the top. I'm going to start by trying to create this inset right here. So I'm just going to right click and choose normal scale. What that allows me to do is bring my polygons uh, in in size. Like so, I'm just going to bring it in slightly. And I'm also going to go into my four way view so that I can see what I'm doing. Right now, I can tell this is a little bit too tall. And if I'm very careful, without changing my tools, I can actually move these. And I do that by grabbing the, uh, the Y handle of my axis right here and clicking and dragging down get something that looks like this. Next, I'm going to extrude it up. It looks like I accidentally deselected, so I'm going to hit undo. I'm going to extrude up until I get up uh, about the same height. And I'm going to choose normal scale to make it larger. Uh, I'm going to be the, recording right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm recording right now. Be, yeah. And uh, I'm going to make it larger with normal scale. 
that I'm going to extrude up again to create uh, another portion of my faucet. And then I'm going to use the bevel tool, which does the same thing as extrude and normal scale at the same time, to bring this in and form the uh, narrow portion right here. I'm going to bring it down on the y-axis with my move tool. And I actually want to make it a little smaller so I can go back into my normal scale tool by right-clicking, choosing normal scale. And then I'm going to extrude it up again. Get something like this. Again, I'm going to now scale this slightly up, so normal scale to make it slightly larger. Extrude to bring up the top. And that is the start of this. Now to bring out the spigot is a, a similar process, except we're going to be doing it sideways. So I'm going to first select these polygons on the side here that are aligned with my z-axis, excuse me, my, uh, my x-axis, so I can do this in my front view. And I'm going to choose Extrude Inner, so right-click, Extrude Inner, and bring these in a bit. Now, I want my, my uh, spigot here to be round, and to make it round, I'm going to have to adjust the shape of these polygons. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it out along the x-axis. So I take my x size and I just set that to zero. And then I drag it out a bit. Next, I just want to work with these polygons. So I'm going to go to Selection, Hide Unselected. And I get something that looks like this. What this frees me to do is go into my side view here and adjust the points until they snap on a circle. A trick for that, just to know what a circle looks like, is to add a circle to my scene and align it with this plane, the YZ plane. So I change the plane from ZY to, I guess, oh, ZY is correct, it's just too big. We're going to make it much smaller. Move it up like so. And now I'm going to move the points that I have in my cylinder here until they match the edges of this circle. And a quick trick for toggling between your Move tool and your Selection tool is to hit the Space Bar key. So I'm just hitting the Selection tool to select, select and move, select and move, select and move. Now, if this needed to be absolutely precise, I could be absolutely precise about this, but this is more about concepts than uh, perfection. So now that I've got a circle in my side view, I can extend out that spigot. Now I want to be able to see it in relationship to the rest of my object, so I'm going to go to Selection, Unhide All, and now I can see everything again. It's looking good, except that it's scaled up a little too large. So I'm going to scale it down, like so, and now I can extrude it out. and extrude it out again, this time making it smaller and rotating it 90 degrees so that it's flat. Can then move that down, do an extrude enter, and an extrude. I would then go in and use my points tools to adjust the shape of these elements. So for example, I might come in and select this ring of edges, which I can do by going to selection, loop selection, and I can rotate them like this and move them closer to my spigot like so. I can also adjust the angle of my spigot slightly so it better matches this photo. And I do that by taking my selection tool, selecting those points, 
I've turned off only select visible elements, so I can select all of them. And I rotate them uh, a few degrees back this way. And that's the basic process of how I would go about building a spigot like that. Let's just drop it in a hypernerves object to see how it looks. And it's a good start. In a future video, I'll go over how to add in uh, additional detail.